continuing our stories here, that opinion, core for the Shalom and related, with related Fabrangians. So he's talking about of Mendel. The beauty of these is that these are stories. I mean, I never told these stories uh, by Fabrangians, but they, they, they told me personally to, to uh, the opinion. In fact, that I've instructed that Mendel to Fabrangian as soon as he came. Fabrangian de Bachrin. Manus Friedman relates, he was there in 770 when the member came out in 1964-65 and, and describes beautifully the, uh, his engagement with the Bach and his Fabrengen nation. Joseph Minkowitz was there too. Did I tell you about the prison in Shabbos? I didn't tell you that. I think I mentioned it, yes. Say it again, it's a short word. The mental told him at first you're in prison and then they send you to the lager, the hard labor in Siberia. He says prison was much better. So he so when you looked at it in prison, it's better. He said, yeah, in prison, there was no problem of Shabbos. In the labor camps, there were. The conditions in the prison were worse. And the constant interrogation that Shabbos wasn't a problem. So this is described his first Shabbos, the Mendel's first Shabbos in the labor camp. As I told you yesterday, that Mendel told these stories without the, any trace, any trace of, uh, of bitterness or any sense of being a hero. The beauty was that if you if you didn't know his story, you didn't know that he'd been the last 20 years on and off in different uh, labor camps. We met him the day he came out of Russia. You would have no clue. One of the boys, tremendous sense of humor, completely you know, self-effacing, but not in an Aveda kind of way. Just he wasn't crushed and he wasn't a hero. Neither. He didn't come out uh, this way, he didn't come out that way. He was a chassid. He served the Abishta. That's it. So they were still in the, la in the prison, the prison, labor camp, labor camp. We kept there in London, New York. He was just the Oiva Dasher. They were to change the conditions. So now, thank God, they can uh, put on this tomb, which the straps snapped in Siberia because of the cold. And how he managed to get them is a story. But uh, from the second he got off the plane, it's, there's a picture of him. An incredible picture of him. He says when he arrived to London and the shluchim uh, with his relatives uh, uh, there. Ahmed Sudak is greeting him at the airport and Bernard Shemta flew from Detroit. So a picture snapped there. It's just a fantastic picture. Just uh, the love, the smile, the the innocence, the, the beauty, a very clever man of Mandel, not saying he was in any way naive, but uh, that's the whole beauty of it. So this is his first Shabbos in the Lager. So he says he arrived in Siberia the, the beginning of the week, and he's thinking, so what's going to be with Shabbos? That's his whole problem. What's going to be with Shabbos? So he thought to himself, if he doesn't work on a Shabbos, they're going to shoot him, they kill him. And the uh, Alpidin, you know, they know how to do that. That's suicide. And he thought, and, and, he, and if he does suicide, he has no chelik. This is a man thinking. No suicide, so no chelik, no ilam haba, no share the world to come. So then he thought to himself, world to come? I don't have that anyway. So I'm not working on Shabbos. He said, Amanda, this is not a, a, a cute little, uh, you know, he said, Adam haba, you fool. Sorry, Mahabu Yeha, ah, not working on Shabbos. So what did he do? So the whole week he worked very hard, not, not like the other fellows who worked obviously just to discharge their obligation, nobody exerted themselves, not like the Uchus of the Mechuzah. So when they came Friday, he approaches the office and he says to him, he's not working on Shabbos. He says, what? You, what? You're not working? He says, you're going to work. The man will says to him, I'll work on another day for two days. And in brackets, he says, this was Mr. Nefesh, 
to Pinya says, because they was backbreaking labor. And to work double, you just you kill literally killing yourself. To do two days' work, I don't know, breaking boulders or what they were doing, digging. So the mental continues to be, you want to send me for another, for another 25 years for the next level of, of labor? Fine. You want to throw me into Karza? That was some solitary confinement. Do that, but I'm not working at Shabbos. So the, he's called the Charnik. This is the guy in charge. He himself was the, you know, what was he doing in, in Siberia with this, with this job? At any rate, so when he heard this, he said, okay, his friend, he said, no, you don't have to work Shabbos. And even when he was transferred to another place, the word was out, this fellow doesn't work on Saturday. And uh, he didn't, and other Siddim as well. And an incredible story in another minute, they had another story. See, Ronnie joined us. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Sorry to interrupt. No, no. Uh, it's a beautiful story, it's a famous story. So I'm going to say this also, you hear this story. A similar story was Rabbi Asher Sassamkin, Rabbi Asher Batumar, famous Hasid, who used to sit behind the Rebbe, also a long beard with a casket, also came out. He came out after, I think, Rabbi Mendel. So he too was in Lager for how many years, for decades. So when he came to a particular place, they told the fellows there, the other, the other prisoners, said to the one in charge, the, the Charnik, that this, this, this Jew, Sasankin, doesn't work Shabbos. He says, what? He's going to work. And then the people told him, don't set up with him, because you're going to remain the fool. <laughs> so the guy in charge says to him, this is Friday, going to work? He says, the boss says, no. Oh, it wasn't a fire. It was the middle of the week once. So he says, no. He says, but tomorrow's not Shabbos. It's tomorrow's Yom Tov, Shmini Atzeres. Shmini Atzeres. So the guy in charge there, this is the, this low officer in charge of the laborers there. He says, look, he says, do me a favor. He says, I'm going to be in big trouble. At least stand there and uh, pretend you're working. So the Bosha goes there where they're working, they're laboring, starts to daven. And he had such respect that they let him, they, they let him daven. Meanwhile, person comes to take off who's there and he was in a corner not there actually with the working it was somewhere in the forest in the corner and he saw that he wasn't there so they said they went to bring him so Whatever, they brought him there, and then Abasha holds his ground and says, if you agree that I don't have to work, okay, you let him go. And the Goyim then said to him, okay, you're not working. We're working, you are. At least make us happy, entertain us, sing for us. So he began to sing and dance, and he made a record that this was said, I said, he had a coffers in the work. In the lager, in the, in the labor camp, this abortion made about shuva. It's my kind of a yid there, and he made it through. And, and the Balchuva became more from than him, he says. He became more from than me. He says, what happened? He said, he came Hanukkah, and he wanted to, to take the potatoes with margarine and to make it a menorah. That's what Abortion wanted to do. But this fellow that he made, made about shuva, he said, uh, no. Then I write a light on a proper lamp. He wants a proper lamp. Somehow he managed to get it, some metal, a metal container. So it's the fifth night. And he lit in the bunk, he lit the menorah. And all of a sudden, he told him, throw it into the snow, because the a top officer is not just the, the guy on top of them every day watching the labor, but a, a higher officer is coming to inspect. And he says, I'm not extinguishing it. My lights can remain. It's a famous story. And this officer walks in, and they're all silent. This is a death sentence. 
and he sees the, the, the five candles burning in this, this makeshift metal container. And he says, to, says in, in Russian, Fiat? Fiat? And he said, yeah, and he walked out. He was Jewish. He was asking if the fifth night of Hanukkah and they touched him and didn't say a word and he walked out. So these are examples of uh, resolute Mercedes Nefesh and their glimmers or even the tormentor, the enemy, uh, is deeply moved and touched. Okay, friends.